thành khẩu trai báo muốn đọc nhưng mà không có thời giờ đọc chưa có đọc hết ok tôi in hết rồi một sư à sẵn sàng để đó nhưng mà chưa có đọc hết rồi cố gắng cố gắng cố gắng gắng đi rồi I understand how God must have felt when He gave the Bible to us. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the Bible is there and it doesn't get into our eyes and ears. <laughs> Xem lại rồi gửi lại cho chú sau vậy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so today we welcome some new uh, people. Uh, chú thầy, đi you know, anh Dũng. Yeah, anh Dũng. Dạ, anh Dũng. Xin hòa có hội thánh yêu thương hiệp nhất là yeah, của Hồ Sư Nguyễn Trí Thiện. Dạ. Yeah. Yeah, good to have you. Yeah. Hôm nay thì mình sẽ tiếp tục cái phần uh, hướng luyện về, về uh, sứ mệnh. We're gonna talk about mission today. And, um, I will try to go between English and Vietnamese and save time at the same time, so, <laughs> so bear with me. Um, okay, first question, what do you think mission is? 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 Oh, man, I have the answer right there. Okay, mission is something that we do as a church. Chúng mình tức là điều chúng ta làm trong cái tư cách hội thánh tức là this is what we do as a church. And mission is not something you do out of your impulses, like what you think you should do. Mission is something you do because that is what God has called you to do. Sứ mệnh là điều mà chúng ta làm vì cái Chúa bảo mình làm chứ không phải là mình tự nghĩ là chuyện để mình làm. Tại vì nếu mà mình nghĩ là chuyện để mình làm thì nó không phải là cái sứ mệnh đến từ nơi đến phía trời, phải không? Nhưng mà trước hết đó thì tác giả đây cái 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 cô mẫu của cái tác giả này đó là ông ông nói đến cái sứ mệnh không phải là cái gì trước rồi ông mới bắt đầu mới định nghĩa. So this this uh, writer he said about what a mission is not before he comes to what it is. So The first thing, the mission is not a vision. Không phải là cái khải tượng. So mission is not a vision. Why? Why is it not a mission? A vision? We've been talking about vision for a few weeks already, for a few sessions already. So why do you think mission is not a vision? Tại sao? Okay, so mission is something you're already doing, or you're supposed to do, and vision is something you are going to. Got, what it's going to look like when you do what you're supposed to do, okay? So vision is something... It's a vision. It's in the future. It's not here. It's not now. It's not here. It's not now. Vision is the future, and mission is a big now. What you do now in order to get to this future, okay? So if your sons or daughters want to be a doctor, what is their mission? Study. <laughs> They have to study. They have to go to medical school. There's no other ways around it, right? And uh, they have to pay, pay a lot of money, maybe <laughs> take a lot of student loan or have mom and dad pay for it if they can. But being a doctor is a future. But if you don't do the now, the mission, you will never get to the future. So that's why there's a big difference between mission and vision. And if we don't differentiate between the two, we will be very confused when we try to write out the statements for mission statements, vision statements, and, and value statements, stuff like that, okay? So to be clear, mission is not vision. And the second one, mission is not purpose. Hay là mục đích. What is purpose? Mục đích là gì? 
What did you want to get to? The goal. Mm -hmm. Is a purpose a goal? Is a purpose. Why are you doing it? Yes, purpose is why. Remember the golden circle? In the middle it is why, right? And then how? And then what? Remember the video that we watched on, on uh, TED Talk? Yeah. We want to... Uh, he used the example of, uh, of the Apple company. We want to innovate the whole technology thing. This is how we do it. We create very intuitive uh, products, that are easy to use, very simple. And this is our iPhone. Do you want to buy one? Okay. So, the why is a purpose. Why we do things that we are doing. And the why is not the what. The why is not the how. The how is mission. The how is mission. The what is vision. Okay, try to remember this golden circle because we're going to come back to this very often as we talk about what you're just supposed to do. And um, this golden circle is right there in the Bible. You can see so many places in the Bible. Uh, but we don't have time to go there now. Let's just go over this first. So vision is, mission is not, vision is not purpose. So what is mission then? Mission is you have it in the in the outline. Uh, it's broad. Bao quát. Sứ mệnh là một cái điều nó phải bao quát. If you want to talk about the church mission, it cannot be very very tiny or limited. It has to be broad. Broad. Okay, big, but manageable big is not like unmanageable big, it's manageable big, it's within our reach, but it has to be big. Your mission as a church cannot be every Sunday service. Why? Because every Sunday service is, is a part of you, it is you, it is, it is how you exist. But mission, the mission that God wants us to to do in this world as a church is not just worship services. If this is all we do, then we are not actually doing what Jesus did. What Jesus did? He went into the people. He went to preach the gospel. He do all kind of uh, miracles and teaching and counseling and do all kind of stuff to the communities in order to get people on board with him, right? So Jesus' mission was not just worship services, even though he did that. He went to the synagogues, right? He teach the Bible, he read the Bible over there, but it's not just worship services. It's had to include evangelism. Part of my English, if this is not correct. It has to be more about the community because God calls us to be a part of this community. So it has to be broad. It just cannot be about ourselves, our, our existence. Uh, one of the examples here, một cái ví dụ trong cuốn sách uh, của chúng ta này. This is a good one. Sứ mệnh của Metroplex Foundation là mang đến một thành phố hy vọng cho tất cả các cư dân về nơi Đức Chúa Trời được vinh hiển. And in English, the mission of the Metro Metroplex Foundation is to provide a city of hope for all its citizens where God is glorified. Is that a mission? I'm reading right from the book. Is it a mission? I think so. It is, right? That is a mission because it it's clarifies what you do, what you want to do, okay? 
to provide a city of hope for all of its citizens where God is glorified. Right? But is it doable? This is a broad mission. It's very big. Cái sứ mệnh này rất là lớn. Nhưng mà nó có làm được hay không? Can one single church do this? No. Obviously not. You know, you cannot evangelize the whole city and make the whole city your church. You wanted to, but you cannot do that. Even Jesus himself didn't do that. Okay. So one of the things that we need to understand about mission it, it is it needs to be big enough within our reach. But at the same time, we have to emphasize it is it must be within our reach. If it goes beyond our reach, we are either prideful or foolish. Because we don't know our limitation. Okay? So that is the first thing about uh, mission. It has to be broad. It has to be the second thing. It has to be brief. Ngắn gọn. It has to be brief. Why? We can't remember too long. We have fish memory, you know. And and the thing is, the shorter the mission, the easier to remember, to memorize, and the easier to execute. Because if you put everything in the mission. You got a, a full page of paper saying this is our mission, and then when people reading from top to bottom, uh, by the time they read, they, they come to the bottom, they want to forget whatever on the top, on the top <laughs> right? So we can say our, we cannot say our mission is to provide Sunday worship service, to provide evangelism, to do this, to do that, to do all kind of that stuff. We can because it's just mission needs to be very concise, very brief, and easy to remember. Because if you want people to do it, you have to have them to memorize it. It's just like with our kids, you know, at home. Sometimes we have to talk to our kids so many times trying to, to tell them to do something. And if you are not specific, if you are not brief, you're going to lose them right away. You lose the focus. So that is something about mission we need to keep in mind. Need to be brief. And this is a good example. Uh, the Church of Willow Creek in uh, Burlington, Burlington, Illinois. Our mission is to turn irreligious people into fully devoted followers of Christ. Sứ mệnh của chúng tôi là biến những người không tín ngưỡng trở thành những người môn đồ hoàn toàn tận hiến của Đức Chúa. Very simple, but it's straight to the point. Okay, so when we talk about mission, it's straight to the point. It doesn't go, it doesn't beat, uh, beat around the bush. And when we um, define our mission, our values, our visions, all kind of that stuff. Our ministry here at BBCG has to be to the point. We cannot keep beating around the bush and hoping that the bush will clear itself out. If we want to cut the, the bush, we have to cut it down. If we, we want to clear the way, we have to clear the way. Straight to the point and be very effect, effective doing it. And again, if you have any questions, just feel, feel free to uh, raise your hands. And, Sao cái tiếng Việt của cái chữ broad là một sự dịch sao vậy? Uh, bao quát. Bao quát. Bao quát. Yeah. Tức là nó rộng đủ, nhưng mà nó sẽ nó không có nó không có quá rộng. Uh, I usually think with pictures. Picture. I guess you know what this is, right? It's an umbrella. Imagine this is a church mission. And under this mission, there are smaller umbrella or department. The department. And we, we're going to come back to this on, later on in the chapter. And under the department, there's a smaller one. It's personal. Umbrella under umbrella under umbrella. That's how mission structure 
That's a good way to put it. Okay. So the next thing, the mission must be biblical. Phải học với kinh thánh. Cái sứ mạng nó phải học với kinh thánh. Because there are so many things that we can do today in the church, but it is not biblical. Can you give some example of the things that some churches do? Well, some churches somewhere are not our church, okay? Some churches do that are not biblical. Can you give me some example? Raise fund by opening a lottery. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Or do bingo? Bingo. <laughs> bingo, okay. Okay. Marriage for gays and lesbians couples. And there are churches that they are so proud. Come here, welcome LGBT. Now the add more Q. They add Q into it. LBGTQ, Q is queer. <laughs> Uh, queer is not queer. Queer is transsexual. It's transgender. Queer is dịch cho tiếng Việt là quái quái đó. Không, họ họ they don't belong to any of those LGBT. So they add one more Q and queer, which is queer in English. Yeah, we queer, we queer, we queer. How do I know this? Oh, because I got into the uh, foster parent classes. That's how I learned about that word. Uh, it's so interesting. Yeah. So um, there are many churches that do things that are not biblical. So when we talk about a church mission, it has to be biblical because it is the most important thing for a church. As a church, we cannot, we should not, and we cannot do anything unbiblical. That is the rule number one that we can never forget. <clears throat> and yet we do that all the time. I give you an example. Right here in this church, okay? If you get mad at someone, what do you do? Kick your name. Cry. Oh, I deserve it. I get rid of If you upset with someone in the church, what do you do? It could never happen here. If somebody's mad at me, they go tell for you, or somebody else, and they come back to me as a story to be. Okay. That's the same reason why they mad at me in the first place. <laughs> you avoid that person. You're not talking to them. Yeah, so you see, the problem is right there. What the Bible teaches us to do. Go straight to the person. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what happens. You know, if, if they, they shoot you, they hit you, well, that's their problem. <laughs> But the Bible teaches us to come directly to them. But because we are Vietnamese, we are not familiar with confrontation. You know, we don't feel comfortable with confrontation, no conversation. By the way, if we have time, I would do that confrontation, no uh, conversation training. It would be interesting. And we don't know how to confront, confront people with the right thing, with the Word of God. And we are so afraid of hurting people's feelings and when we ended up hurting people's spiritual life because we don't tell them the truth, right? So there are many things that we do in the church that is not biblical, and we just keep that in mind, and uh, it is true, and we, if we look around, you will see that. We don't try to, you know, criticize our brothers and sisters, but, but we need to know for sure that there are things that we do that are not biblical. Yeah, okay. It's not okay, but it's okay. Because we are still a human church. We are not the universe. We are not, you know, the heavenly church. We are still earthly church. So it's okay in a sense, but it's not okay. It's not okay because we need to improve ourselves. <coughs> but it's okay because we, we are weak. We have our, our, our weaknesses, and God uh, understands that. Thankfully, he doesn't, you know, punish us for that. Right now, um, let's open to page uh, 92 if you have the Vietnamese version and page 66 in the English version. 
this is a very interesting um, ana analyst of the Great Commission. Uh, let me try this one. Try to open it here. Okay. Now look at this. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. This is a great commission, right? Mm -hmm. Who is it for? Okay. The 11 disciples, <laughs> right? What do they have to do to make disciples? Mm -hmm. Make disciples. Make whom? Make who to become disciples? All, All nations. And how do they do it? By baptism and teaching. Where? It doesn't say. Okay, and if you look at uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, this is also the Great Commission. For who? The eleven disciples. What do they do? They go, they preach the good news to all creation. How? It doesn't say. Where? All the world. Okay? Look at Luke chapter 24, verses 46 to 48. Eleven disciples. What they have to do? Be witnesses to ordination by or how by preaching repentance and forgiveness of sins beginning from Jerusalem <coughs> and then Acts chapter 1 verse 8 also 11 disciples be witnesses how with power and this is sometimes uh, a struggle with the Baptist uh, belief in with power and then people who raise people from the dead like doing the sick all kind of that stuff but that's the happen. That does happen everywhere in the world. It's just not in our tradition, uh, in our Baptist tradition. But it does happen. So um, um, I'm not trying to encourage you guys to go out there and speak in tongues and do all kind of miracles, stuff like that. Trying to pull people legs to get it longer or to heal the sick like that. But if God does put you in a position and cause you to say a prayer of healing, don't hesitate to do that because you have the power of Christ to you. And if put you in a position where you have to cast out demons, <coughs> take up your faith, do it. Because you have the power to do it. It just doesn't happen, you know, very often in the Baptist circle, that's all. <laughs> okay. How? <laughs> With power. Okay. Where? To Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the utmost parts of the world. Okay. So when we read these four passages, this is the commissions written for us in four different places, in and 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 all of them kind of you know compensate one another, and then you have a full picture. The mission of the church is to make disciples, to preach the gospel, to be witnesses to all nations and creation by doing baptism, by teaching the word of Jesus, by preaching repentance and, by for and forgiveness of sin, and to do that with power to all the world, beginning, starting with Jerusalem, and then and Judea, Samaria, and everywhere. Yeah, sir? Uh, this is the last one I have. Okay. okay. Share. I can make yeah, yeah. So, so if we just focus on one single passage of the commission, then we're going to miss out the other three, right? So this is one of the challenges for us here when we talk about the church mission. How can we... Um, incorporate all of these teaching about the, the, our mission into one single statement that our people will remember. That is a challenge. And it has to be biblical. Ở đây cái sứ mạng của Hội Thánh Chúa đó, nó, nó phải ra từ trong Kinh Thánh, phù hợp với Kinh Thánh. Mặc dù có thể cái chữ mà người ta dùng ở trong cái tuyên ngôn sứ mạng đó, nó không có hoàn toàn giống như cái chữ trong kinh thánh. Or maybe the words that we use in the, the mission statement is not in the Bible itself, but it has to convey a biblical idea, or else it won't be considered a mission of a church. Okay. 
Rồi các chị em có chỗ có câu hỏi gì thì cứ hỏi nha. You have any question? Just or any comments, any uh, understand, misunderstand, any scratching, scratching your head or whatever. My comment. Yeah. No comment. Read the book. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's it's all in there. It's all in there. Okay, the next one. Mission is a statement. Sứ mệnh là một cái tuyên ngôn. What does a statement mean? What is a statement? If uh, if you do training with me long enough, you will realize that I I do uh, a lot of uh, explaining of the words that we use, because sometimes we say things that we don't completely understand what the meaning of the word is, and it's no use. So I, I spend quite a few, quite a lot of time to try to explain the meaning of the word before we use it in a, in any context. So what is a statement? Do you have a statement of your own? Yeah, một lời tuyên bố, một lời công bố. Thì tuyên huyệt cái bằng gì một sư đánh chữ em? Một cái tuyên ngôn, một cái tuyên ngôn chứ. Sao một sư đánh chữ em mà... Chữ em là một tuyên ngôn. Một đó, một, 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 một tuyên ngôn. Một tuyên ngôn, cái sự hài sinh mình. Chữ một thôi. Giống như bản tuyên ngôn độc lập vậy đó. Còn cái trên đó là cái gì? Hợp với Kinh Thánh. Là phù hợp với Kinh Thánh, hợp với Kinh Thánh. So a statement is something relating to the truth, right? If you don't have the truth, you don't have a statement. You cannot say, uh, I state the, uh, uh, you cannot state something which is a lie. A lie is a lie, a lie is not a statement. A statement is something that has to be true, okay? And mission is a statement because it has to be true and it has to be short and broad at the same time and biblical easy to remember and a statement sometimes uh, usually you usually usually put a statement in writing not in words usually in writing yeah so a statement is something that you can easily share with other people very easy to share with other people, okay? Okay, the next one. Sứ mệnh là điều Chúa muốn mục vụ hoàn thành. The mission is what God wants the ministry to accomplish. Sứ mệnh là điều Chúa muốn mục vụ hoàn thành. Okay. Now this is a, a not a fact check but a, a doctrine check. What do you want our church to accomplish? What do you think God wants our church to accomplish? What is it? Witnessing. Witnessing. Okay. Do you know that we are always witnessing? Yeah. We are witnessing when we are not witnessing. You see what I mean? We can witness without witnessing. It's confusing already? There's always someone watching you, right? Yes, you got it, Donna. We're always, as a Christian, we're always witnessing, whether we want it or not. Okay, what else God want us to do? Great Commission. Uh, great Commission? Okay. By the way, Great Commission is not in the Bible. Okay, it's the word that we create, we, we name it like that. But uh, this word is a great commission is not in the Bible. 
doesn't mean that it's not biblical. Uh, what else? Make disciples. Make disciples. Study his word. To study his life? His word. His word. Worship. Worship. Anything else? Believe it or not, this is what God wants us to do. To fight, fight. against fight. evil. Fight. Against, evil. against whatever is wrong and bad. That's why there is something called justice. Justice through the church of God. Justice, which is commonly called So the, you see, there are so many things that God wants us to accomplish. That's why in our mission, we have to be very clear about our values. We have to be clear about our values in order to identify among tons of things that God wants us to do. We have to be clear about this so we can pick a few things that God wants us to do because we cannot do this. We cannot do this all, right? Can we? Not all at once. Not all at once. <laughs> Not all at once. Right? And then they're all together. In one way or the other, but if we want to put into our mission, if we want to put it on paper, if we want to put it on our mission statement, then it has to be very specific. It cannot just be in general. It has to be specific, and we have to somehow incorporate all of the, the other things that God wants us to do into a single statement that people can remember. And it has to reflect our values. Because if the statement, if, if the mission statement doesn't reflect our values, it's not our statement. It's not our mission. Right? And mission is something that we are supposed to do. Not something that we are doing. Okay? Or um, maybe I have to put it in a different way. Mission is something we are supposed to be doing. That's a big difference. Than supposed to do and supposed to, to be doing. So the challenge for us, and when after we study all of this, and then we have to let it sink in and have to, you know, digest all of this. And hopefully, by the time you digest it, you remember some of it. <laughs> the mission is something that it has to reflect our values. It has to tell the world what we supposed to do as a church here at Garland, BBCG, for the kingdom of God. We're not doing any of this for us. Yeah. So our mission cannot be raising money. Our mission cannot be, you know, making a profit, or earning uh, some, you know, status in the community. If we believe that the church of God has to, needs to have a status status in, of some kind in the community, then we would put all of our energy into doing something for, for the community in order to be recognized. Yes, we want to be recognized, but we don't want to spend all time and energy into doing it so people recognize us. We want us to be recognized so that we can witness to them, we, we can tell them about the Word of God. So that is our mission. Okay. Any question? No question? Okay. Let's go to the list of the questions that I have on the bring up for you. We'll walk through this together and hopefully 
we get something out of this. This is a very interesting list of questions. Uh, however, before we go there, let me see. Um, let me show you this. This is here. Okay. Just relevant. Okay. Let's read some example of uh, effective transmission statement. Okay. So these are something that people have thought about. They thought about and they wrote it down into their mission statement. Very easy to remember, simple, but also at the same time extremely challenging. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's do the one, first one. Calvary Chapel, making disciples, two words. Who can remember that? Mm -hmm. Right? But what they don't say in the mission statement is how you do it. That is for strategy. They don't say where, that is also for strategy. They don't say the end result in this, because that is a vision. This is just what they do. So making disciples, when I read this mission statement, I, can, I, am in, I imagine in my mind, a person coming to this church, they will be a disciple right away. Because this is a mission that they're gonna do. So whoever coming to the church will be taught the Bible right away and we'll be, you know, taking baptism classes, whatever, taking 101, 201, 301, 401 classes, so they can become a disciple because this is the focus of the church. Can we do this for the Vietnamese church? Now this is a challenge, a challenging question. I guess we could, but it's not going to be very effective. We have to have a plan to do it. Okay. We have a plan. The thing about the Vietnamese people is they don't read. <laughs> so scary. No, I'm not kidding. It's very true. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Well, if you get the truth from my kidding, it's okay. That's a statement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, I would encourage you. Well, I can encourage you, but this is, you know. Making this week, we've been talking about making the disciples, blah, 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 for years. Mm -hmm. But are we truly doing that? Yeah. Because there are different models of making disciples. You can do it one on one, which means each of you here needs to go out there and look for your own disciples. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> Because he, if you are a leader, you're supposed to do what Jesus did. And what Jesus did with the 12 disciples, he took out the three. John, James, and who else? Peter. Peter. And Peter. To, to be his inner circle. And each of us, we, as a leader, we need to apply Jesus' model. And each of us should have a disciple. It's not that they have to do something, they copy us. No, it's not like that. Being there, they are our disciples. That means we train them, we teach them, we show them what we learn about the Bible. We encourage them, we be there for them, and we guide them through difficult times in their lives. Do you have someone like that? Okay? That is one way to do the disciple. There's another way is put. Group discipleship, which is uh, more of a classroom type like this. Yeah. It is effective in some certain areas, but it's not very effective on a deeper level one-on-one. -on -one. Because if one-on-one -on -one discipleship is very effective, but it also takes a lot of time, energy, which we don't, you know, we are not willing to give out freely. Okay, we are torn between, you know, needs, or family needs, and church needs. And how can I find the time to spend with my disciple, uh, disciple to help that person to become like Christ? So, in this mission, it implies a lot of uh, strategies in there. Okay. 
Any question? No? Okay. Go on to the next, the next best thing then. Making new, making great. Easy to remember? Making new, making great. Yeah. So what do you think the value of this church is if you read the mission statement like this? So you, yeah, you want, you want, exactly. they want something new, right? Exactly. You want, you want a change, change, you want change, you want great. They want change, they want innovation. Like America great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That so, is one of the reasons why it's a good mission statement. It makes people think, it makes people yeah. wonder, it makes people ask it makes questions. People you know? so, sometimes confusion is good too. Yeah. Because if you are confused enough, you would be you know, very uh, irritated enough to Curious. go find out the truth. Curious enough to go find out the truth. Making new, making great, so I don't know if they have a new pastor every year. New one to hang each year. Yeah, we do have new one every year. And the next one is the rock, San Diego. This is where I came from. Yeah. Safe, equip, and send. Simple, easy. Safe, which is evangelism. Equip training, send is another type of evangelism. But this is from the church, going out. Save is to evangelize people, to bring them into the church, train them, and then send them out. And city on the hill, this one is very famous. I heard so many people using this one. Yeah, that one is a good Know one. Jesus and make Jesus known. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, now you can call up and go out and put it Dạ, biết giê xu và truyền bá dân nhà thôi mà Theo cái cách dịch của người Việt Nam mình Còn hồi thánh mẹ mình hồi xưa Chris Baptist Tôi chưa có nghe ai dám nói câu này là No Jesus and be like him I haven't heard anyone saying that yet No Jesus and be like him But bố chị mẹ lì đã đi sao khó liền rồi Bố gắn chí xưa Love God, love people, make disciples So you see the order of values right there God is first, and then people, people, and then my disciple. Yeah, and implying this mission statement is, if you love God and you love people, you have to make them disciples. That is the only way to go around it. There's no way around it. You have to go through this. And you teach people, you teach people to love God, you teach people to love people, you teach them to become disciples. <laughs> And if you want to become a disciple, you have to go through that. You cannot go through any other ways, you know. You can't just become disciples without loving God. And you can't become a disciple without loving people. That's how it is. That's pretty good. Christ Church of Valley, to reach the valley for Christ, this is really, really broad, wow. right? Very big, very big. Ambitious, so to say. Vague, actually. Yeah. It's not clear. But it's easy, it's easy to remember. What do you mean by reach? Because there are so many many ways to reach things. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. To know, love, and serve God. Yeah. Short to the point. Short to the point. But we can see that this church, United Methodist Church, by the way, if you read this, you can see, uh, I can see an, an implied um, issue right here. Mm. This is an internal focused church. That's right. Internally focused church because they don't talk about people. They just talk about be know God, love God, and serve God within themselves. Yeah, and then people can say, "Oh, I go to church every Sunday," and they they even say, "If I go and worship God, that is how I serve Him." Oh man, you don't read the Bible. That's not how. It's part of it, but it's not how. It should be the first step of you serving Him. Okay? But worship is not serving. It's different. Leading people to experience a God first life. Interesting. How can they challenge people to put God first in their life? Because everyone would put themselves first in the single heartbeat. Right? So this is very challenging. Connecting people to Jesus and one another. Easy to remember, right? Right. 
we exist to make heaven more crowded. <laughs> <laughs> this is a funky play, uh, way of thinking. <laughs> and some people uh, add uh, make hell less crowded or something like that. <laughs> Establish a, and multiply gospel center, city focus, church communities. Yeah, it's broad, and, and they we can see the focus here is to plant church. Yeah, plant church. Yeah, to make new churches. Uh, so there are so many things, so many examples. And we can look at a few here more, and go back to our list of questions. Reach up, reach out, and reach in. Interesting. Reach up, reach out. And reaching. Mm -hmm. yeah, the order is getting interesting. Yeah, the order interesting, is getting yeah. interesting. So we reach up, you you reach, reach up, up to God, God, you reach out to, to people, people, and then reach <laughs> into to yourself. Mm -hmm. So they, they that theology is this: you go to God first, and then you go to people. That's how you take care of yourself. Or your church. Or your church, mm -hmm. yes. It's interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting theology. Mm -hmm. Having people find their way back to God. Yeah, that's easy, that's clear. To revive believers, rich friends, and renew culture. Mm -hmm. Isn't this something we want to do? Well, people talk about revival, and they don't even uh, try to define the word revive. You have to die first before you get revived, <laughs> right? So when we talk about revival, it's not about you being alive, it's about you dying. People forget that. If you want a revival in your church, you die first to yourself. And that's what the Bible is trying to say for over a thousand pages. And because we don't read that very often, so we, we just talk about revival like active church membership, and we do all kind of stuff to the communities, and we are out there doing all kind of things, all kind of stuff. But no, revival is about dying. It's not about living. You don't live before you die. Spiritually. Okay. Helping people find their way back to God. Yeah, we got that. The church of worshiping God and loving others. Empowered by God to reach others for Christ. Helping people take their next step toward Christ together. Have people take their next steps with Jesus to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ. So all of the examples will be, if you have time, you go home and you can read more and you will see. Uh, they are great because they are easy to remember. But at the same time, if we think deeper, some of the mission statements here do imply <laughs> quite a few questions. right? And, and it implies the theology behind it. Like I try to explain to you some of the statements. Any question? It just seems like all the great uh, mission statements are short. It is. It is short. That's why usually they have a, uh, not just a single statement, but they have a few more pages just to explain the mission statement. Some just do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go to the list. Of, uh, we need to answer this. Now, think about these questions in terms of the Vietnamese Baptist Church of Garland, okay? Don't think about the universal church of Christ. We think about our local church. According to scripture, what does God want you to do. What is it? What do you think God wants us to do? What did you say? Did you say something? Make the cycle. Make the cycle. Make the cycle. Make the cycles, right? Agree? Question. Are you making disciples? I am part of disciples. Yeah, 
this 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 uh. That's why she's still laughing. Well, sometimes the the truth just hits us so hard, you know. Yes, this is true. This is what God wants us to do. How are we doing it? What else do do you think God wants us to do? Yeah. Okay. Love one another. Share. Sharing, sharing the what do you think? I love with others. Anything else? Teach his word. Teach his, teaching the word. Oh, maybe we can put a teach the display of word. Teach the word, the word. <laughs> okay. What else? I'm sorry? Grow deeper. Grow deeper. Interesting. Grow deeper. Be more like Christ. All of these are biblical. Anything else? Okay, have it in focus. Have it in focus. I think uh, to for me right now, I'm learning to enjoy God. Enjoy God. Enjoy God. Okay. That's why we had the cake. <laughs> Happy? Uh, okay. Think in terms of the whole church, not just our personal experience. Okay. What else should you think? I mean, uh, <coughs> thank witness. Be a witness for the community. Grow spiritual. Mature. Uh, grow deeper. This is right here. You grow more spiritually. Anything else that you think God wants us to do? Encourage one another. Encourage one another. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not ready. <laughs> Uniting, united, transform our community. I'm sorry, transform the community, transforming the community. This is a big task. <laughs> I've been waiting for this, but I haven't got it yet. Right. Don't be. Right. <laughs> Close with it. I just talked about this. To die. Die. <laughs> and I don't mean it in a negative way. Die the judge has to die of her own self in order to become revived in Christ's new self. Okay. Well, I'm just put it out there. So if we agree that these are all the things that God wants us to do, how are we doing those? How are we making disciples? How are we sharing our love to one another? How are we teaching the word of God? 
How are we growing deeper? How are we becoming more like Christ? It seems like I have more questions than answers today, right? <laughs> Okay, let's just, let's just uh, put this list right here. We know the main thing that God wants us to do, which is to preach the word, to preach Christ, to make disciples, to do all kind of the, the things that the Great Commission Jesus asked us to do. The next question is, what are we doing? And try to try to calculate how much time you spend as a church to do the things that you are doing right now instead of doing the things that God wants us to do. <laughs> what are we doing right now? We did it. Press I. We're press learning mine. right now. We're learning the work right now. We're dying. Okay. We're dying right now. <laughs> 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 Literally. <laughs> okay. 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 You know the word die has has different meanings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first meaning is to lose your life, the second meaning is to change your color according to the dye you put into it. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing? What do you think? Right now? Yes, as a church. Right now we are fixing up the church. Remodeling. Worship. 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 Uh, Fellowship. We remodeling. Okay. Yeah, we're changing. Yeah. Always eating. We're changing. Always eating. Always eating. Things that we're always eating. That's eating, fellowship. Okay. Eating. Yeah, that's a word. That's fellowship. Fellowship. Or, yeah, that's a word. Fellowship. Fellowship. Yeah, that's a word. Man, I have to teach a class on fellowship. Because eating is not fellowship. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've been trying to say that for many years. Yeah. We keep on doing the anger, mother. 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 Eating it is starting. more about what? <laughs> eating what? is starting about fellowship. Yeah, fellowship. Okay, Anything else? <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> what are we, doing? <laughs> we are sitting here thinking, thinking about what we are doing. We don't, and we don't have the answers. All the answers. We're doing outreach. Outreach. Yes, we do. Yesterday. We are. Visiting. Praying. Visiting. We do have a praying. 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 On, on the average, how many percent of church membership is doing this? One person. <laughs> Not even the one and that. How many percent? I a few people go out. No. How many? How, what is the percentage? Like one percent, two percent, three percent, four percent? About five. Around five percent? That's a... Decent number compared to American church. But we can do more than five, right? Yeah. Do we want to do more than five? Yeah. Yes. We need to. Do you want to do more than five? Yeah. Maybe someone else. <laughs> <laughs> you see what We're I'm trying to design it right now, too. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Okay. Okay, if, if you feel how pressed, because yes, I am trying to push you into a corner, okay? What else do we do? She said uniting. We are. You are united? Okay. Maybe that's what we think we are. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a trick question? <laughs> now compare the two. You're going to hear me, love. Compare the two. This. We got worship. <laughs> Yeah, what's up right here? I can put it down. So, right here? Okay. Good. The remodeling, the church is not in this list, okay? 
The Bible doesn't say, okay, you model your we're beauty. We're transforming. Mom, so we're transforming. <laughs> she's trying, she is yeah, negotiating she with you. Right? <laughs> she's trying to negotiate. I know, I know, because she's in the financial community. Okay? <laughs> trying to negotiate. Fellowship, we have fellowship. This is where we can share love to one another. Right? Uh, learning. Teaching the word. The word to them. Uh, eating you like enjoy another most enjoy Yep, that's so so praying so here. Uh being united. Where is it on this one? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. United now? Oh yeah. Visiting people. Encourage one another. Encouraging one another. Uh, okay. We are, uh, uh, changing, transforming, whatever that means. <laughs> so, <laughs> because you have, because when you say the word changing, you you're thinking of something. Maybe I I read it and I think differently. Okay, remodeling, changing. Okay, maybe let us say go to the same. Changing, changing. Oh, and remodeling, and transforming. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with that. <laughs> we are dying. Yes, we are. Are you happy dying? Are you joyful dying? Joyfully dying? I enjoy people. No. Nobody can say that. Because in order to die for Christ, we pay a lot, much, much, much more than you think. So if you look at the two lists and we compare them, are we doing okay? Are we? I leave that question for you to think about, okay? When we compare the two lists between what you think God wants us to do and what you think that we are doing right now, and we can match the two, the two lists. Uh, cái việc mình làm là một chuyện nhưng mà cái, cái mức độ mình làm thì nó là một cái vấn đề khác nữa. Làm cho có. Làm cho có. Hey, I didn't say that. Từ thú, từ thú. Chịp chết lên thú đồ tha. Well, confession is the first step to dying, so okay. I welcome that. Okay. If there is a discrepancy, why aren't we doing what God wants us to do? Discrepancies, the differences between the two lists, it seems like the, our two lists are like a match or something, and we're so happy about it. But if there is some difference between the two lists, why aren't we doing the things that God wants us to do? Because we keep ourselves first, not that. Right? We put priorities. Priorities. Priority. Priorities. We don't have a plan, really. We have no plan. Okay. Talking not from focus. people who always work with plans. How do you think I should uh, lead a church? There are so yeah, many ways to lead a church. Okay, I can roll from you. I can go behind your back and just spanking on your, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. This, uh, this doesn't, uh, doesn't just apply to our church situation. It does apply to our personal life too. Because we know as a Christian we know what God wants us to do. And we know that we better do what God wants us to do. And we also know that we are not doing what He wants us to do. As a Christian, I'm not talking about a church anymore, I'm talking about as a Christian. And it is a constant battle inside of us. 
whether or not I should do the things I want over the things that God wants us to do. And in so many times, many cases, we choose to do what, I, what we want to do because it's, it's more convenient. It's easy. Uh, it doesn't take any sacrifice because if we do what we want, we don't feel like sacrificing, do we? No. If we do what God wants, oh, I have to sacrifice my time with the family. I have to sacrifice my time with my job or whatever. But if we do something what we want, we will be happy and do it all day long. Think about the mission of your life. What are you doing right now? Are you truly living? Or are you just surviving? Or maybe you just exist? Go to work, go home, enjoy family, sometimes quarrel with wife, has some problem with children. Is that all our life supposed to be? Or is there more? Do you know there's more? Why aren't we yet on the more part? Why are we stuck here? And I like Let me share with you a thing you have time, right? Yeah, we have time. Let me share with you my personal vision and mission. Um, when I was about, uh, I think, 19 or 20 years old, I live in Kangkar City, so and, and my grandparents' house they have uh, three or four stories, I don't remember. But I usually live, uh, stay on the top story of the, the, the house. Uh, so uh, one night, after God called me into ministry, I asked him, I come up to the, all, all, all the way to the top of the house, where I can see the whole city, and I asked him, God, how do you want to use me? Because I offer my life to you, I don't know how you're going to use me, but I want you to, to use me as, a, as your servant. And I asked him, how are you going to use me? I was praying, it was very clear, this is something I can never forget. The sky, the sky was so clear, there was no cloud at all. And then I asked him, and then he said, open your eyes and look. When I open my eye, I look, I see in the sky, big cloud, dark, it was about to rain, and it wasn't there like five minutes ago. So I asked, so I asked he says, what does it mean, God? I see the cloud right there, but what does it mean? And he said, I want you to use you as a cloud. And I asked, how? And usually when I ask God something, he asks me a question back. <laughs> that's how we come, you know, that's how we talk to each other. I asked him how. I said, "What do you?" Th and God said, "What do you think the, the clouds do?" And I answered, "It rains." And God said, "That is how I want you to. I want to use your life." This is my personal vision. And then I asked God, "Well, I understand that it rains, but what does it mean?" And God said, "What does rain bring?" Water. Life. Life. And then, uh, it, it was a long conversation. Let me just put this on, okay? We don't have much time, okay? God revealed to me, He wants me to be as a cloud that bring water wherever it is needed. Spiritual water is not talking about the physical one. Bring water, spiritual water, wherever it is needed. And one thing God reminded me right there. After the rain, what happens? The, rain the cloud is gone. So God was telling me, your ministry is about bringing water into the people, to the places that need it. But after that is done, you are out of the picture. So God is reminding me, your ministry is not about you. It is it's about me. You are just a tool that I use to bring my living water wherever it is needed. And then that's it. Then you are out of the picture. 
and that is a great reminder for me. And it's it's not just my vision. Later on, it becomes my my mission to bring spiritual waters into any life or anywhere that desperately needs it. And that mission is reflected in in my ministry, not just in my teaching or training, in my translating books at home. Uh, whenever I can find some spare time, I do it. Uh, Sometimes I do it you know, without even sleeping. There are days that I spend whole nights out to translate just a few chapters of a book that I so enjoy. And boy, I hate it. Vietnamese people don't read that much. <laughs> I know, I do. <laughs> I just want to share that to encourage you. Thank you okay. for that. Yeah, I spend much of time to do the book because I believe if uh, I go out into the community, I do a service, paint their house, <coughs> fix their door, do all kind of stuff, yes, I can do that to impact the community. But God has given me a, has given me a gift of translation, not just for this generation. If I work on books, it lasts for decades. It's not just one single use, and that's it. More people, especially in Vietnam, can use it. So that is part of my mission. And not just serving God in the church, but at the same time, find some time to translate books into Vietnamese, and that's how I've been doing. I've been serving God in, in that ministry. Um, without any pay. Okay? Just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, so that is a, the mission of my, my personal vision and mission, so you can understand. Now the question is back at you. What are you doing? What price? You don't have to answer now. <clears throat> you can stay up all night thinking about it. Okay. Now let's go back to our list, okay? Um, if you continue on your present course, where will the ministry be two, five, or ten years from now? Can we envision how VBCG will become in the next two, five, or ten years? Can you envision that? It's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult because we almost never think about it, the church this way. It's difficult because we usually react rather than proact at, at what is going on in the church, right? And it's difficult because sometimes we want to do the things that we are already doing. We know how to do rather than to do something new. Because doing new things is always challenging. It's always challenging. There's always something wrong waiting around the corner. If we try to do something new, but if we don't, we're going to stay just the same as we were. We will be surviving, but we will not be thriving. We will leave, but we will never experience revival. These questions are for your, uh, your, your self-thinking. Do your key leaders know where the ministry is and where it's going? Interesting. Do your key leaders know where the ministry is? Do they? Do we? <coughs> Do you know where it is going? Well, I think in general, yes. I think that's part of the Okay. So yeah, so everything is about no, no, it's, 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 it's not that new, but so what we're just trying to in the maintain the model is okay. what the survival yeah, I understand. And so because of that we just so busy completing tasks that we have not had a strategy to grow the mission. 
Yeah, and, I, and I'm not blaming you for that because uh, having no pastor is God's plan for you, not me, not, not my plan, or not anyone else. It happened because God wants it to happen. It happened because we have to learn a few lessons that we didn't. And it happened for the better of the church. Do you believe that? And now you see, after we've been through everything, with a, you know, whatever happened during those four years, looking back, you see how wonderful God is. How wonderful He is. I'm sorry I get a little bit emotional, but that happened to me too. Because there are things that God takes a lot of time to try to teach us. And, and we are so stubborn to, to learn. That's why it takes so long. But it, it, it was well worth it. Let me just put it that way. It was well worth it. For the church of God. For each and every one of us. And it, it, it's difficult because after going through that, uh, we were like in uh, survival mode, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. We try to afloat, to keep the boat afloat. <laughs> and we have to struggle against all kinds of storms and, and waves and all kinds of things that try to, to, to turn the, the boat over. But thankfully, God is still here. God is still here. And He's always here. So now is the time. If, if you see that picture, you know where the church is. And if we keep on being a boat, a floating on the ocean without the engine running, then we're not going to go anywhere. We're going to be stuck in the, in the middle of the ocean. So this is something that we're doing right now, this training, is to restart the engine. We're not trying to start something new here. We're just trying to do something that God has already done through us, God has already asked us to, to do. Okay? What will it take to change course and move in a God-ordained direction? What do you think will it cost to change this church? Like you said, we probably have to die. We Is have to true? die. <coughs> we have to die. And sometimes, in order for the judge to change her direction, we have to lose some members too. Believe it or not, that can happen. It's already happened. Yeah, because not many people, you know, this is a church of God, we are united, yes. But people are still thinking differently, and sometimes they act on the difference rather than they act on the similarity. Yeah. They focus on something different rather than self. They focus on something that is the same. We have the same God, and if everyone in this room and in this church focus on the same God, we won't have any problem. Yeah. Right? But that is us, human beings. That's why we have to learn to live together and to serve God together as one servant. Like I, I was preaching a few weeks back, the book of Isaiah chapter 43, many witnesses, but only one servant. We are called to be God's witnesses and servant. One servant. Remember that. Are you and the leadership willing to do whatever it takes to move the ministry in the new Direction, whatever it takes. Well, we just approved 10,000 for an extra budget for a restroom, I guess. We, we would be you know, willing to do uh, many other things. And uh, uh, to, um, just so you, you know and understand me better, my leadership style is not about telling you what to do. My leadership style is about doing what you think that you need to do. And I will help you figure out what you need to do. So my role here is not about telling what you have to do. It's about encouraging or, or create an environment where everybody 
can have a say in what we should do as a judge and then do it together as one. Okay? Amen. Um, any questions, comments? Uh, we have 15 more minutes. Any misunderstanding, confusion? Any weird things that I said? <laughs> So, 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 uh, so yeah. go back to the number six and six. Okay. What will it take to change course? So if you ask all of us, they will have different opinions, have different yes. ideas. How about you? As a new pastor coming in, what did you see okay. as a whole, as a church, what do we need to, to do to change? Oh, now you ask for us. Yeah. The first one is a big C, commitment. That is just most important thing that God requires from each and every one of us a Christian. Commit. Thank you for asking, Anna. Commitment to God and to one another. And the second thing is sacrifice. We can't make things happen if we, we don't sacrifice. If we don't sacrifice our certain hobbies, certain things that we want to do, then the church of God will just stay the same. Commitment to Christ, doing what he asks us to do, and willing to sacrifice to do it. And that is the two things that I can see right now that the church needs. And usually, if you have a commitment Everything else will fall into play. If you need, if you have commitments, everything else will fall into place, right? Yeah. Any any other question, comments? By the way, this I can do for you. But this you have to do yourself. Okay? Just to be clear. I can sacrifice a lot of things. Being a pastor is a big sacrifice already, but well, if God asks me to sacrifice more, I'm, I'm willing to do it. Because it's my calling. But commitment is something that you have to work with God. This is something I can encourage you, but I cannot make you commit. Commit to something that has to come from you. Okay? Of course, I can help you like by uh, inspiring you with the Word of God, with teaching, with training, all kind of that stuff, but eventually you will have to make a decision yourself. Am I committed to this church? Am I committed to the Kingdom of God? Am I committed to one another? If the answer is yes, everything is very easy to do. Okay? Anything else? Okay, if no, then let's move on to the last part, the kinds of missions. Um, these will help us understand better what missions are and how uh, the missions apply in our church. The first type is um, conscious versus unconscious missions. Just like values, you know, we talk about conscious values and unconscious values. So there are conscious missions and unconscious missions. Conservations are those that we recognize, that we know, that we can write on the, on the wall right now. But there are subconscious missions too that we don't yet recognize, but we keep on doing. And the, the subconscious mission, I mean the unconscious mission, is very difficult to identify. If we want to identify it, we have to do a, an inventory of what the judge is actually doing, and look deep down, then we will see the mission, the, the unconscious mission. And one of the things that's important to recognize the unconscious mission be, is because if we don't recognize it, we're going to keep on doing it, doing it, doing it, without changing the way that we are doing things. And then in the end, it will hurt the judge even more. It's like you're bleeding somewhere in your body and you don't know where it is and you don't try to stop the bleeding, then you're going to bleed to death. So the unconscious mission can take away a lot of energy and time 
And uh, if we don't recognize it, it's going to hurt us a lot. Any question? And um, do you need to? Uh, do you have any examples in terms of okay. conscious? Conscious mission is like evangelism. Go out there, preach the gospel, teach the word of God. That is a conscious mission. And the unconscious mission is something that it depends on the values of the church. Like, uh, let me give you an example. In my previous church, one of the value is keeping the peace. Like I said with you, I shared with you a few, a few weeks back. Keeping the value, keeping the peace between people is one of the value. And because of that value, the the unconscious mission was trying to please everyone, mm -hmm. trying to make people to be happy and try not to confront them with the truth, even though we know that the truth is in the Bible, but we don't want to confront people because we try to keep the peace. And that unconscious mission drives the whole church into a situation where people don't want to truly share what is going on in their life. They try to hide things away from people, and that's not healthy for any person, any Christian. And believe me, in this church, there is unconscious mission too. For example, if a, um, let me just give a simple example here. Let's just say I'm a guest. I walk in into the kitchen, and I saw a basket of uh, money. 20, 10, $1, $2. I don't know what it is. And then someone come and explain to me, hey, uh, this is for the, for the meal that you eat. Okay, I'm a guest. So I don't have to do anything that person explained to me. Okay, so the unconscious mission over here is you're trying to, uh, to pay for the meal, but not from the budget. There's front of people who enjoy the meal. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just giving you an example. And the unconscious mission is like that. Like is here. In that situation is, um, whoever knows that system, they will contribute. Who don't know that system, then they won't. But then, if those who don't know the, the system, if they find out and they feel, oh, I should have known that. You know, when I come here, I should have known that. I just, I just give out an example so you can, you can see how unconscious mission can affect the way that we do things around the church. I'm not saying it's good or bad, this is your system. Yeah, there, there is any, in anything that we do, there's always pros and cons into it. But, you know, it's just an example. And um, um, if you look into your life, you can see so many unconscious missions working underneath your radar too. Mm -hmm. you know, like um, the An Hoa just gave an example about her son. Uh, one day her son just come to her and then praise her king and then nói đủ thứ chuyện and then she finally figured out, okay son, what do you want? <laughs> that is an, an unconscious mission. The, the, the son was doing something that he didn't realize that he was doing something to for his benefit, you know. But the mom re recognized it. Okay. Any any other questions? Um, okay. Let's move on to the next one. Personal mission versus organizational mission. Like I, uh, I wrote a picture before you. Uh, this is very important, and I need to. Uh, I need to spend some time on this. I just say this is a the judge mission. Church mission is an organizational mission, right? Because we are an organization. Organization. Okay? <coughs> if 
someone wants to come to our church, let's just say they want to join our church, especially for English-speaking people or Americans who are very clear about mission and stuff like that, they would ask us, what is your church mission? If our church mission is, is uh, about evangelism, and then that person is very excited about evangelism, and they say, okay, if your church is all about evangelism, I'm all in. So they will be happily joining right now. So, so this is a personal mission. Okay. So when the personal mission and the organizational mission are in line with one another, people are very happy doing things together. But what if someone's mission is different than the organization? What happens? They are not joining you, and if they are already in the, in the church, they are going to find ways to split. They are going to find ways to, to learn about people's mission, and if they have enough mass, if they have enough people that share the same mind with them, they are going to split the church. This happens everywhere in this world, and it comes out to organizational mission, personal mission, even though people don't recognize it or people don't say it out loud, but this is how things work in this world today. Okay? So this is very important. So when we finalize our mission statement, it will be um, like a measure to everyone outside of the church. If they want to go and join the church, they read at our church mission, and if our church mission says something that is, you know, Similar, uh, similar to their mission, what they what they are called to do, then they will be happily joining in. If not, then that will be it. They will, they will go uh, look for another church. So the difference between uh, personal and missions like uh, and, and and organizational mission is like that. Um, one of the things that I I. Uh, I'd like to share with you this. When uh, the uh, back then my approached me, I did ask about the mission of the church, the vision of the church. Uh, and and Thang Ki said something that we have printed on our bulletin for so many times. Yeah. And uh, I'm sorry, but when I when I read it, I said, well, this is not actually a vision or a mission. Uh, it's just uh, giống như là một cái, uh, cái tôn chỉ, một cái câu nói, một cái khẩu hiệu chúng ta just like a, something that we say, we express what we have to do. That's all. But because I know this church, and because I know Mục Sư Yêu, and I can see my mission, my personal mission that I share with you, and the mission that Mục Sư Yêu has embedded in this church is parallel to one another. That's one of the reasons why I say yes to the community. So uh, that's a secret. Now it's open. <laughs> um, share versus unshare is similar to that. You know, if you work in a, you work with a group of people that don't share a mission, you, you're going to have a lot of headaches. You know? If people want to do all kinds of things differently and, and don't, don't have the same mission, we will constantly go into conflict with one another because they want to do different things. That's all. So when we have some conflicts in the church before blaming the other party or before, you know, uh, getting so upset and then walk out of the church, sit down, talk, think, what is the difference that we have? What is the difference in our values? What is the difference in our mission? Maybe when we realize that, oh, that's, that's, that's different here. Okay, our mission is like this. My mission is like this. My mission is like this. My values like this. My values like this. When we see the difference, maybe we can compromise. We can come to a common place. Okay, but until then, we have to sit down and talk. Don't just walk away. Yeah, that's how to deal with the problem. Um, any question? Share versus unshare, correct versus incorrect. 
there is a such thing as incorrect mission too. And that's easy to give example. Okay. The mission of the church here at BBCG is to uh, facilitate uh, LGBTQ community request. <laughs> is that? <laughs> yeah, that is a good example of the wrong mission statement. We can see that right away because whatever is incorrect is not in the Bible. Yeah, very easy for us. Now, actual mission versus aspirational mission. Suman thực tiễn đó xin với Suman nào ước. Aspirational is something that you want to do, but you are not yet doing. You know that you're supposed to do, you want to do it, but you're not yet doing it. That is aspiration. Actual is something that you are doing right now. Okay. Personal, organizational, departmental, I already mentioned that uh, previously. Oh, let's talk about the department. Departmental uh, mission a little bit because in this, this church we have different departments: worship departments, financial departments, visitation departments. Each department, after we go through of this strategic planning, each department should have a mission. But that mission of the uh, the departmental departmental uh, mission should be under the church general mission. Okay? Let's just say if the church mission is focused on evangelism or is focused on teaching the word of God and the children ministry uh, mission is just to create uh, joy, fun for the kids and, and enjoy, make them enjoy their lives. So those two missions are not together. Right? So if our church mission is about the word, the Word of God, or the Word, which is evangelism, then it should be reflected in the children ministry. It should be reflect, reflected in the financial, the financial committee, in the building committee, in every department that we have in this church, okay? And what is the finance, let's just say, let's just throw this question here. What is the finance committee mission? <laughs> Can the finance committee answer that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I just ask how. <laughs> <laughs> how to answer it? <laughs> what do you need the money to allow? <laughs> and why you need the money? Okay. Okay. If you if you're talking about comedy, the finance department, what do they do? They make sure there is money for the company and the employees and everything else, right? Because without the without money. No organization can run. Okay, so it's like the blood in our body. Okay, we are being realistic here, even though we're Christian. Well, we have to be realistic. So, a financial committee of the church mission is to make sure there is money for the church ministry, whether it is evangelism, whether it is children, young adult, small groups, whatever ministry that the church has. The finance committee has to do something to make sure the money is there. Raising funds, you know, maybe asking people for donations, special donations, talking to the rich and the very rich and the super rich in the church or in the community, whatever. Do whatever things that we can to raise funds for the church. This is I'm sorry, but this is, I have to tell this, this is the truth. This is the responsibility of the finance committee. It's not the responsibility of the pastor. Okay? Because the church is an organization and the pastor is a part of it. 
just like the visitation ministry, what is your mission? Your mission is to and encourage people to visit one another. It's a mission is not just to go out and visit people because if you have 200 people, you can you maybe do it, do that. You may be able to do that. But if you have a thousand people, how can you go and each everyone and visit them? You can't. So you have to facilitate the visitation, facilitate care in the in the church. Likewise, uh, if we have uh, deacon ministry. Uh, if we have children ministry, young adult ministry, those ministries' mission must be under the umbrella of the church mission. Okay, and if any any um, department's ministry that goes outside of this umbrella, we have to correct that. Okay, so the financial committee cannot raise money to do something for personal gain. They cannot. I don't think they are supposed to. Uh, they, they, I don't think they're supposed to uh, go out and solicit money for the church. Oh no, no, not like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think that's a role at all. I think they just manage, get finance for it, and get the facility, you know, the infrastructure. You might not manage. Manage the finance of the church is including uh, raising funds, asking people to uh, donate, to contribute, to to give more for the church. Yeah. It's just I think it's just we because, that. because yeah. here they don't do that. But with all the church that churches that I've been to, mm -hmm. the finance committee is supposed to be the one who gave mm -hmm. all young people, yep. you know, and yep. and do all that fundraising and do a lot mm -hmm. and all that. But since I've been here with Garden. We, we don't do that because Normally, yeah. Can, you know, do that. Yeah. Do that. Normally, Vietnamese churches, community, finance committee, don't do that. Yeah. But the American church, they always do that. They always come up with plan, Small ways to give, business. or, you know, if, uh, if we are technologically advanced, you know, you can do the phone offering. Yeah, app offering. You can give to the app and you can, you know, if someone with packing some easy, they just. Okay, yeah. instead of $10, it can become $1,000 easily. Just set up so everybody should. Just zero yeah. the money. Yeah, that, that is what happens. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, so uh, the, the finance committee should allocate money to prioritize what is the church prioritizes. The thing with the finance committee is like this the finance committee work with the leadership of the church to determine the priorities of the church, and our, priori our priori um, priorities, I'm sorry for my English, our priorities is determined by our values, okay, values, mission, those two things determine our finance. If we value the old people, we're going to spend a chunk of money to go to provide service for them in the nursing home. If we value, highly value, you know, evangelism, we can fund a big chunk of money to, if we can do it ourselves, we can fund it to uh, missionary organizations to do the work yeah. for us, yeah, to help us. But uh, thank you for, for, remember, uh, for reminding us of that. Uh, the finance committee should work with the leadership team and uh, prioritize what we should do, what we should not do. This is how much budget we have. This is how much budget that we expect to have this year. Fortunately, we can get there, but if unfortunately we are not getting there yet, then the finance committee would submit a plan. How can we help the church to meet the proposal? Yeah. So, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just giving the example out there. I'm trying not to, uh, let me, uh, I don't know how to use the, the, the word correctly. I'm probably muốn muốn put 
financial community on the table and then chop, 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 like that. Remember, they're the one that's a good part of this. Hey, at least you change from worship to finance. Well, there's, there's always another department for the next time. Okay. Uh, any questions, any uh, comments, anything else? We are a little bit over time. What next? Yeah. Oh, so it just mission not like people and our staff mission like I'll be there with the church all the time or have to be changed by the other people. Can, can you, yeah. can church mission. Church, church mission. mission. Oh, okay, that's a good question. Can it change like with a new pastor? Uh, yeah, yes, new it can, but it should always reflect what the Bible teaches us to do. But we don't change our mission very often. Okay? We change how we plan to do our mission every year, but we don't change our mission every year. Just like uh, many, many pastors, especially Vietnamese pastors, who usually say that, oh, năm mới mình sẽ có khải tượng mới. This new year I'm going to have a new vision for the church. No. Vision is something that stays for years. You don't just change your vision every year. You don't change your mission every year either. But you can change your planning. The way you do things to fulfill your mission and to reach your vision. Yeah, that is. Th thank you for a very good question. Yeah. Okay, anything else, Angie? Yeah. Sáng nhận lại cái ngày training kế tiếp cho mọi người. Oh, yeah, okay. The next training will be in, uh, September 22nd. Uh, since we don't have anything to do on that day, I believe our uh, training will should start around 1.30 or 1 p.m. Oh, yeah, right, the phone, the pack. So, uh, when do you think the worship team will finish? Yeah, practice for... We do go to Okay, so do you plan to start on the 22nd or not? Well, we're in September already? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's just give her some, uh, uh, some space, okay? Let's just start at 1.30. Okay? Okay? On the, no, on the 22nd. If we start at 2, some people will leave. We will not stay. Yeah. Unfortunately, from 12 to 2 is 2 hours. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, we start at 1.30 p.m. on the 22nd. All right. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. I know you are very tired. Uh, let's just pray and then we can uh, dismiss. And get ready for the service. Và bây giờ chúng ta hiệp ý là cầu nguyện nha. Cầu nguyện cảm ơn Chúa rồi mình sẽ nghỉ ngơi. Heavenly Father, thank you for this session. It's very challenging for us because we are not used to thinking about this. But I pray that you will, um, you have given us a chance to listen to all of the material is in the that's in the book. I pray that you would have it. Uh, sink into our heart, our mind, and help us to reflect on it, not just for the church, but for our personal lives too, Lord. Help us to define our mission and to carry out a mission for the glory of your kingdom. Uh, refresh our mind and our body today, and also uh, give us some rest for uh, the memorial service tonight too. Thank you, and I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Thank you.